be a building here at Olympia. And uh, Chris Eubank, who loves these entries. He's been a very popular fellow around the country. We've seen him up in Glasgow and Birmingham and in Manchester. And now Eubank returns to the capital, to the familiar sounds of Tina Turner. Led out by his trainer, Ronnie Davis, who takes all sorts of fearful stick from the champion, but says he doesn't mind as long as he produces him right on the day. And Eubank has been right 34 times out of 34. He has promised one brief mistake, one second, and you'll see excruciating violence, quick and sharp. Well, that's his promise, but he'll just do it his way. He will take care of business. Used to be a middleweight, of course, now up to 12 stone. Christopher Livingston Eubank. And he's obviously working in the dressing room. He looks warmed up, ready to go. He'll tap his gloves together, I'm sure. There he goes. And I've rarely seen him really looking more intense at this stage. The gloves together, and at a moment, it'll be up and over, I'm sure. the fighter in the world who makes an entrance like this and Eubank says it's all mine well your big fight commentators of course Jim Watt and Reg Guthridge and we will hear from those two after the master of ceremonies who tonight is Mike Goodall and in fact Eubank. Ladies and gentlemen, live from London's Olympia, welcome to the main event of the evening. Promoted by Matchroom and sponsored by the Daily Mirror and Sunday Mirror newspapers. Your officials appointed for this contest by the WBO are the supervisor in charge, Mr. Mark Schechner from Miami, Florida. The judges are Mr. Walter Cavalleri from Italy, Mr. Cesar Ramos from Puerto Rico and Mr. Arthur Ellison from Germany. Your referee in charge of the action this evening, Mr. Stanley Christodoulou from South Africa. Your timekeeper, Mr. Bob Edgeworth, and your matchmaker is Mr. Frank Turner. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a contest of 12 three-minute rounds of boxing to decide the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Between introducing in the red corner, wearing the white trunks, the challenger from Toledo, Ohio, USA, his record reads 45 wins, 36 KOs, six losses, and one no decision. The former IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Linda Holmes! <laughs> and in the blue corner, we're in the yellow trunks from Brighton. His record wins undefeated in 34 wins, 18 by KO. The WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World. Today's weighing home scale 11 stone of 13 pounds, Eubank 12 stone, the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World.
So the run down then with Stanley Christodoulou in his 63rd World Championship fight from straw weight to heavyweight. So he knows his way around. Very good referee. Now, see if it's glory and money is uh, Eubanks' adrenaline. And we'll find, soon discover if uh, Lindell Holmes' his age and a bit of ring rust have affected his proficiency with only one fight in the last 21 months. But Or whether it will be a question of, as he's saying, he's got the skill. Uh, Maybe it's Eubanks' mind over matter here. We'll find out. Well, well, no, I don't think we'll give him a knockdown on that occasion. He just has got a bit excited with himself, the old boy there. Right. Yeah, there was a time, I tell you, when I would just bet no more than evens for Lindell Holmes. And uh, Eubank will take your pick. It was a really good fighter in his time, and I'm still hoping... Well, for you, Bank Sank, and certainly the paying audience said he is. And uh, he's already getting, you know, I thought maybe his act of coming in the ring, which he incidentally he did before television uh, put him on the screen at all. He did it in several fights before he got on the screen. And uh, was simply the best. Well, it wasn't his idea, to be fair to him, and I'm not sure that whether Tina Turner's approved of him or not. Holmes has committed himself a little bit quicker than I thought he would have done in the first round, Reg. He's a smart fighter. And smart fighters don't usually commit themselves as quick as this, but he's made a few moves in the first round uh, and he's taken a couple of left hooks uh, because of that. Yeah, well, maybe he's uh, thinking about the old legs later on, Jim. That was his problem when he lost the championship to Darren Van Horn. Not a noted puncher, he just went out of body fatigue by the 11th round. We all want to see Eubank put under a bit of pressure. Remember, he's... Uh, his last three fights have gone the distance of 12 rounds. And there's been some dispute about them, although Jim White and I thought he won them OK, but uh, there were one or two critics who thought maybe he was a bit lucky. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be not bothered over much about causing immediate destruction, does he, uh, Eubank, or is he? <laughs> not exactly playing with the punches. He's not, he's not sure quite how smart this fellow is yet. Well, I've noticed in the Eubank's last couple of fights, he's uh, come into the ring really soaked in sweat, so he's obviously working out well in the dressing room before he comes out, and uh, that shows he can start sharper. He's looking sharp enough here in the first round. He's certainly the Wizard of Aussies, isn't he, Jim? He's been 12 stone exactly for his last five fights now, I think. And that's the super middleweight division, 12 stone. Lindo Holmes, 11, 13. Well, there were some decent hard punches exchanged there. Vauxhall asked us if we could get their new Carlton Diamond Estate into a 40-second commercial. And cut. OK, thanks, everyone. That's a wrap. Thanks, Ruben. Great driving. In fact, we did much, much better than that. We got a 40-second commercial into their new Carlton Diamond Estate. Almost. Out for the second round. Now, maybe Lyndall Holmes is trying to get off quickly, as I say, not fancying to stay in the distance at all. I did hear that his manager, Billy Guts, has actually had a £1,000 stake with promoter Barry Hearn. He's offered him five to one odds. He'd make a good bookmaker with those odds, wouldn't he? Suck him in, suck him in. in the first round, uh, Eubank uh, looked at a little bit sharper and stronger than Holmes. Uh, uh, Holmes couldn't match him for sharpness, and that's only in the first round, so 
unless he sharpens up a little bit, it's going to be a, a painful night for him. He's getting down to business, though, Jim, to me. He's, I've always said, uh, if you can't do that, you have no business in there. But the walk-away stuff, Holmes says if he does that too much, I'm going to walk away at the same time, so we'll have a, no contest. Yes, he, that's the first time he's caught him on the tip of the chin there, Eubank. He's... Holmes looks a little bit loose as he backs off. Uh, he wants to get that chin down a little bit tighter as he backs away from Eubank. Still got enough from memory, Jim, to give him a bit of aggro in the opening rounds by the look of it. He's got some nice punches, Holmes. Midway through the second. It was Holmes himself, Jim, wasn't it, too? He said, you know, he's, he's got the youth. He's a very aware of that, isn't he? That was a nice right hand from Holmes. Over arm right. Caught you bang bang in the chin. He's always taking a good punch. He's been on the deck, but he gets up, doesn't he? Yeah, that's one of his main assets. His strength and the fact that he does have a good chin. He doesn't like taking punches. It's the last thing he wants to do. But when he's got to do it, he does it well. He can, he can fight out of the trenches when he has to. He does his best not to, which I suppose you can't blame him for. Well, it's good action, Reg. You can't ask for better. You know, Holmes is trying to, to push him back, and I think that's the way to box you, Mike. Get him on his back foot. That's what Holmes is trying to do. Can you imagine what it must mean for Holmes? He's been struggling a bit for cash there to suddenly win his second world championship. He had to go to Korea to try and win the first one and uh, went to a close 15 rounder there, the old 15 round days. So the long, leisurely walk back to the office. He always seems, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible with him. He always seems sort of in that private termination that he's got, he sort of insulates him, so they're the, the corner men then, that's Davis in the ring, he nicks him, the, the pit bull, he calls him. Let's have a look at this harmless punch. Yeah, nice. It was kind of wide and it wasn't really the knuckle part of the glove, but it was a decent enough shot and it certainly landed in target. That's trainer Billy Griffin there. And that's the manager on the outside, Billy Guts. Now, talk about him coming to lie down. Well, that certainly hasn't happened at this stage. He's, he's trying for his life, but it's a question for how long. Whether he can, uh, whether he's got the stamina, he's got the will, all right. Third round. See, this game is catches. Ca I don't know what's happening there, Jimmy's just tripping over his own feet there, Holm, no, nothing happened. Well, Eubank showed a couple of little feints and moved to the side, and uh, Holm stood for the feint. <laughs> Falling over from a feint is a bit unusual, especially for an ex-world champion. I was going to say, Jim, if it's a chess match, early on, you know, Eubank is not going to win too much. This fella, you know, he's a good... Good technician. Although Eubank had an easy time in his last defence, Reg, he did look very sharp when he whipped the counter punches out, and that's the way they're coming tonight. He's looking sharp, and that might be the difference between the two of them, just the sharpness and the sheer physical strength that Eubank has. And that's, that's tiring when they lean over like that. It's a smart movie view, right? pushing him down. That tires fighters out. Especially veterans. He's enjoying himself on the senior circuit in his recent fights, isn't he, at Eubank? He knows he's got to get in and fight. Holding and hitting. Well, that's, uh, nobody should do that to, to Chris. He doesn't like that too much. Keep the punches up, says uh, the referee to Eubank. 
I think if this pace is maintained, that you might could stand it better, Rod. You've been the younger and the fresher. I certainly liked Holmes, uh, Jim, in his, in his 20s. He, he really knew the business. All oh, tagged him well there. See, he just looks that split second slower than you, Bank, and that's all it takes. to play Eubanks game now about thinking each other that's why they're stalling they're looking for openings can't blame him it suits him uh, Holmes if he's not being attacked like that remember he came from the, the tough prompt gymnasium Detroit now he's from Toledo Ohio Good finish to this round. Six 16 valve engine, side impact bars, and a new body. It's the shape to be in. The new 16 valve escorts. Fourth round coming up. And I tell you, there's some punches exchanged right at the end of the third there, wasn't it? And our unofficial observer, famous ex-referee Harry Gibbs at ringside, actually gave that last round even. Banks is playful punches coming in, Jim. Everything he's throwing is full weight, isn't it? Solid stuff. Yeah, well, he's given Holmes a uh, full respect. He's entitled to do that. See, so Eubanks, uh, he's not easy to catch. He's got real good reflexes, real sharp reflexes. You can see once or twice uh, Holmes getting set to throw the punch and then just at the last second, maybe changing his mind. He's not an easy man to catch cleanly, Eubanks. See, he springs back so quickly. He knows how to open up there and throw punches if he's got his man in a bit of trouble. And one punch there looked as though Holmes might just stagger from it, but he didn't. And he, he bailed out there, and he's now giving him a time to recover now, you back. Walk away, walk away, then. Holmes is getting the punches on the target anyway, Reg. Good competitive fight. Uh, they're a, bit, a little bit worried about some of the, the reports we've heard about Holmes, but uh, he's got himself in decent shape here. Still looking that little bit sharper, Reggie. His left jab, especially, that's a good solid jab. Oh, yeah, he hurts with that, doesn't he? He's certainly keeps Holmes occupied with that when he's not sure what he's going to do next. Holmes was saying it was in America, it's a bit difficult to take this fellow seriously. They've never seen anybody like him. He really is as individual as a fingerprint. has drawn a couple of leads from Eubank there which missed so I wonder maybe if he's beginning to solve them out slightly I'll be surprised but uh, 
Certainly drew a couple of leads there that fell short. And he's not being bludgeoned consistently now, Holmes, and that, that'll suit him if, if he's looking to worry about stamina, which he probably is. Uh, then Eubanks giving him plenty of rest. Boy's made up for it there, though. It's got him at the end of this round. And the bell came just right for Lindell Holmes there. And uh, Eubank is standing in the middle of the ring admiring his work still. There he is. And the crowd saying, go back to the corner. And I'll tell you what, Jim, they've never had enough of this sort of act that he does. I was wondering whether it was wearing thin, but uh, the Londoners, you know, can be a very cynical bunch. And, uh, and they've stood for it again. And there's Harry Gibbs' scorecard there. Retired referee, unofficial that one is, but... Uh, well, who would I be to argue with Harry? But that's about right, I think, don't you, Jim? Yeah, yeah, the Holmes did his best work in the third round, come back with some decent punches, just about nicked a share of the round. But the other three rounds, uh, Eubank certainly been that little bit sharper. And his movements uh, are a lot sharper than Holmes, and he seems that little bit stronger to me. I was saying, uh, you know, they're, they're usually very cynical, the, the Cockney crowd, and a few sharp ones out there, you can imagine. If there's a nip in the air, they drink it. Fifth round. So Holmes is saying, oh yes, if you want it that way, I've, I've been doing that in the old Cronk gym in Detroit when I was a lad, but uh, can he still do it? <laughs> See, when, he, when he walks away like that, you back is... <laughs> Almost like an insolent bird, isn't he? Sort of pecking as he moves away all the time, pecking the target. Then in the fifth. I'll tell you what, Jim, whatever happens now, Lindell Holmes didn't come to fall over. If he goes over, he's got to get nailed properly. No, he's having a go all right, and he got caught with a big shot right at the end of the previous round. He took it well. There goes another overarm right. See, he does throw unusual, unconventional punches, you bank, and uh, obviously difficult to stop. But Holmes just seems to have lost some of the sharpness that he obviously had in his early career. He's just, his chin lingers there that split second too long. Using the uppercut now at Eubank, that really is the most difficult punch to stop, and he, he lays it in with a lot of power. Oh, excuse me, he's going for a walk. I'm surprised Holmes stood there. He said he was going to turn his back and walk away, but he's forgotten that now. He's concentrating on it. Holmes giving him a little bit of the forearm, yeah, a <laughs> forearm smash we were getting there. <laughs> oh, sunk some good punches in the body there, Holmes. Oh, a little bit low, but the referee was caught, caught off just on the blind side there. When they really tee off on each other, uh, Eubank's youth and his strength, I think, are the telling factors. trying the chess game all together you bang moving either side trying whatever punch he, he thinks might nail this fellow confuse him a bit there it is slow walk back uh, let Gary Newborn find uh, Chris Park there former champion what does he have to say he's been inspiring with you bang what do you have Chris I mean do you think this fight's going to go on for much longer um I've Looking at Chris, I think if he put a few shots together and you know kept the pressure on, I think he could get this guy out of the way. But um, he seems to have slipped into one pace, and he don't really seem as though he's pulling himself out of it. 
He started so sharply, Chris, didn't he? That's right. He started, he started very sharp. He's been looking uh, sharp in the gym. I've been sparring with him. But he just seems to have... Um, I don't know, I think he's trying to take Holmes out with one shot and soon, instead of, you know, putting a few shots together and keeping the pressure on him. Talking of sparring, there's been talk that uh, he had trouble Holmes in sparring this week. Um, yeah, I understand a friend of mine, uh, Darren Dyer, welterweight, um, nearly knocked him over in his corner and had to, had to jump in and stop Holmes from falling over. Round six. So, is Eubank going to put those punches together in clusters as he's known to do but he usually tries to find that one shot to get the opponent wobbling a bit before he does it and you know Holmes has still got a lot from memory to go with Jim isn't he yeah and he's tucking up well he's actually taking more chances in this fight than I expected him to do but obviously he's over he wants to have a go he doesn't see any point there trying to sneak a, a points victory but he's a lot more open so you would imagine uh, Eubank could take advantage of that and get the big punches home but he missed with a lot of shots in the previous round. We've had our own uh, Harry Gibbs unofficial score. That if it does go to distance, which I would thought was unlikely, that uh, that would come from Puerto Rico, Italy, Germany. And the referee is from South Africa. Punches. I wonder if uh, Eubank will go for his walk again, Reggie. One of the things he's guilty of, he doesn't sustain an attack. He sometimes feel if he did sustain it, he could get the man out of there. Sometimes he throws that uh, right arm, you know, a long way. But I must, I must say, in that case, uh, Holmes got the message OK. May have travelled a long way, but he got it. Holmes always comes back with something red, so that's a good sign. He certainly fancies the job. He takes some good shots from you back. He always tries to come back with something, doesn't just cover up and try and get himself out of trouble. Now you've got an old war horse here, Jim. I, I barred him in his heyday, and he was the nearly man for so long, and then he did manage to win the world championship against Frank Tate. Good body shots Holmes throws. He really gets the hip coming with those shots. take him out of there, Jim. I hope people are not thinking that he's carrying this fellow, because he's not. He's taking not, some shots. Not far from it, and uh, Holmes doing some good work here, some good body shots. A good bit of success for Holmes in this round. Yeah, he's still in there. off. The family's going to Ireland on B&I Super Ferry. I don't know how B&I do it. Their midweek seven-day fare for the car and five adults is only £99 return. You can't say no to an offer like that. Call B&I Line or your travel agent for a brochure. Now there's a new way to help you give up smoking. The Nicorette Patch, available without a prescription from your pharmacist. If you're determined to quit, it'll help you beat your craving. I've come to collect. It's for you. Get your free Gringo Bingo card and start playing in the Sunday Mirror. Manana. Round seven. And uh, would you believe there, Jim, that I think we heard Billy Guts uh, saying to Holmes, come on now, get your second wind. Well, he's given you big problems, Reg. He's, uh, as I say, he keeps coming back with something after Eubank uh, has thrown his best. So he's here to fight, he's here to try and win this title, not just to make a few quid and go home with a holiday. 
I must say, Jim, I was one of the few. Everybody was writing this off. I kept saying, well, the Holmes I knew could fight a bit. He's not going to lose it that quickly, surely. Admittedly, only one fight against a very old fighter, incidentally, in the last 21 months. But, you know, these, these Americans that have been on the circuit so long and fought all the best, they can hang in there. Well, lovely left to look at the way he doubled it, body and head. Those were good shots. See if you bank you back with something. See if he'll stand his ground now that he's under pressure. No, see, he's looking for the clinch, you bank. And that's the first time he's been under a bit of pressure and he grabs hold of Holmes. See what he comes back with now. See, Holmes has certainly lost the sharpness he used to have, but he's still a proud old warrior. And those were good punches, the best he's produced so far. Eubank really sucking the, the breaths in there, Reg. This is Holmes' best spell so far. Boys, <laughs> wearing the body down a little bit there, hoping the hands will head will fall, but uh, he's got a hard job yet. I think Eubank must be quite happy that uh, maybe Holmes is a little bit past his best. He really is putting up a stubborn challenge here. Yeah. Remember I said to him, it'd be even money, take your pick with me when Holmes is a, was his, at his best. Well, now let's see if, uh, as we go along from the seventh round now, whether Eubank's assertive ego pays off or not. I mean, this is what you don't want to see that when he goes walkabout. You see some good action, then Eubank breaks off and goes walkabout. That, that actually suits Holmes, doesn't it, Jim? Yeah, well, he's the... I mean, Eubank should be controlling the pace. He's, he's boxing a man, what, ten years older. So, obviously, he should be setting a pace that he can't go with. It's a good shot from Eubank, but Holmes always comes back with something. Always in great condition, Eubank. That's something you have to admire about him. Looks as though he stepped off a Greek pedestal. So he, he still, look at this, you see, the trainer Dan's handing to him until he's ready to sit down. There he goes. Nicky Piper, why is it that Eubank doesn't sustain the pressure? Well, I believe he's got a stamina problem and he's got trouble making the way to 12 stone. I think he realises that uh, if he expends too much energy in one burst and it doesn't come off, then he's uh, stuck for the rest of the fight or could well be. But he's letting Holmes stay in this fight when well, he should right. be putting him away. And Holmes is a very experienced campaigner, certainly with a good punch, you never lose your punch. And uh, it's dangerous to, be, to leave him there, as I say, uh, in the fight when he could get rid of him. Now, what about this punch from Holmes? Oh. Well, that's right. He's, he's a, a very good puncher. He stopped 36 or 45 wins and uh, not a guy to be messed with. Round eight. As Nicky Piper rightly says, the last thing good fighters lose is the punch. But Eubank, as we've said earlier, has always absorbed the punch well. Full power in that left hook again. This is what Eubank must do. Holmes had some success in the previous round, so you've got to get him back in his place again and remind them who the champion is. Harry Gibbs actually gave that last round to, to Holmes. I don't know what the, the German, Puerto Rican, Spanish judges have got, and he's, and he's now got it to 69 to 66 in Eubank's favour. That's uh, scored on the 10 must system and a proportionate number for the loser, so we've had 10 nines all the way down. Notice it's not the typical fight to referee, of course, but Stanley Christodoulou keeps well out of the picture. That's what you bank should be making better use of. He has an excellent left jab, he wants to start using it here. Well, if Lindo Harms has got the legs to carry him home, Jim, he's, he's still going to give some problems here, do you, Bake? I mean, it's not that much, is it? That's how we're reading the fight. You never know uh, how the WBO judges are. 
Well, I think the WBO officials have been kind to Eubank a couple of times in the past, Reg. But he is winning this fight at the moment. He really looks as though he's breathing. He's almost gasping hold, but actually it's a mannerism, Jim, I think. He probably always did that. He just noticed a bit more because you can remember his age now, 35, coming up to 36 any second and looking older by the second under punishment. So a minute to go then in the eighth round of a scheduled 12 World Boxing Organization version of the Super Middleweight Championship, 12 stone. And Holmes has had a good round, Reg, but uh, there's a little sneaky fear that maybe it's taken more out of him than it's taken out of Eubank. I mean, this is what happens when you get to the, the middle 30s. You have a big drive and the body just doesn't recover the way it did uh, six or seven years ago. See, he's really been pretty ineffective in this round. He hasn't produced much good work at all in this round. Eubank has stood off. But Holmes has did very little. Round eight. I like that. There's no attempt to throw a silly punch after the bell there. They're both old pros. Uh, no better than that, anyway. So there's Mr. Krista Livingstone Eubank. Twin brothers, actually, Peter and Simon, and there's the there's the up-to-date scorecard. Then, not the official one. I have to uh, emphasise that. But Harry Gibbs doesn't make too many mistakes, does he? So, of course, Eubank in in front there, 79 to 75. and brush up there, a little bit of Vaseline around the eyes. Thankfully, neither of them are cut, so only just a few contusions of battle, I suspect. Round nine. Remember, last three defences by Eubank. The most, actually, he's the most active world champion uh, at the moment. They've all gone 15, I nearly said 15 in the old days, 12 rounds. He's the busiest of the world champions. Sixth defence of this championship, and then uh, he won and made defences, of course, of the, the middleweight championship. Remember the great fight with Nigel Benn and two with uh, Michael Watson. Yes, he's... It looks as though the old uh, legs might start betraying him a bit now, Holmes. Well, none of those punches really got home, Reg. You know, Eubank backed him up, put him under a little bit of pressure. But they're just little arm punches which uh, Holmes was blocking. Eubank trying that big sneak right hand which sometimes works for him. Drenching him in water between rounds here, Holmes, to keep him going. And, uh, oh, double the left hook there. There's an old sharp trick, uh, Jim, isn't it? That's a bit of class. Well, that's what the class, that's what it's showing. You're just a little burst, you'll see what a good fighter he used to be. I mean, the way, the way he's switching from body to head in the earlier rounds, I'd love to have seen this fellow over here a few years ago. So you bang, it's just different stages in their career. You bang younger, stronger and fresher. Yeah, right above us here on the ropes. But he, he, let, he lets him throw those punches, Holmes, and then flies back at him. But those were poor punches that uh, Eubank was throwing there, just little arm taps. I think, I think that was sort of uh, exercising himself and uh, showing the back of the hall here that how well he was doing, Eubank. <laughs> minute to go. He's taking the punches to the body well, Jim uh, Holmes, isn't he? I'm surprised. When they, I mean, we're so close to it, and we almost feel them going in, don't we? Well, at least yeah. you do, because you've su sucked up some. Mine were only with the amateur gloves. Yeah, he is a good, solid old pro, Reg. He's just uh, fighting a lot bit from memory. A real proud old fighter. So a 
little bit of damage around Holmes's left eye. Hopefully it's just a little bit of swelling. I hope there's no blood there, but did you think, I'm not sure if I see a little bit of blood on his, Holmes's left eye. There's certainly a little bit of damage around the eye. Yeah, it is. Started to swell a bit, Jim Lidham, there. It's, uh, he's cut too. Hope it's not too bad. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve to be stopped, does he? Well, we can't see it really close up till he gets back in that corner. So we, we've got a fellow that used to box for the Do Doncaster Plant Club, but does fairly well in football. Name of Kevin Keegan. Yeah. Kevin, what do you think of it so far? Well, it's a very enjoyable fight. Uh, I was listening to someone on the radio coming down today, and the way they summed it up, I, I almost turned me off the fact that I was coming saying that it was an old guy, he's 36, but I must say, uh, tremendously impressed with Eubank, but the other chap, for 36-year-old, uh, is, I, I think pride more than anything comes to mind when you look at the way he boxes, and uh, it's, it's a much closer contest than I thought it'd be. And you used to box? Well, I went to Doncaster Plant Works, and uh, Bruce Woodcock was at one of the gyms I went to, but that's about as near as I got. round and they seem to have stomped that okay in the corner Jim you can hardly see it now we're as close as we want to be it's nice the way he doubles that left hook Holmes you can really see he's learned all the tricks just a little bit of sharpness is missing now Certainly Eubank from this fight will realise now that uh, if and when he gets in there with James Tony and Michael Nunn and he's written off for Nigel Bender, the sound of it, he'll know what he's got to do. It's going to be tough at the top because this fellow's been at the top and still got enough left to bother him. You were saying, Jim, he switches the punches there. Now, not tremendous power, but beautifully swift punch for a man of his age. And, uh, well, as I say, he's been, been so inactive. Well, not, not bad power either. Eubank pulled away from the hook then, but the way he switched it from body to head, doubling it with the left hook, yeah, you can see a bit of class there. And again, Eubank having a lazy spell here. And if he doesn't buck up, then this round's going to go towards Holmes as well, because he's the busier he's throwing the punches. It's possible he's taken more punches in this fight than the, the last three, Jim, with uh, Thornton, Essex, Essex, Malinga. Actual solid punches. takes a stick at his own corner there, waits for Eubank to back off and then immediately goes in. You know, Eubank doing a lot of missing in this round, Reg. Question of Eubank settling for points decision, Jim, because he was, he was trying like mad in that corner there to nail him, wasn't he? I just think uh, Eubank doesn't want to get hit. I know, I know nobody likes getting hit, but a lot of fighters will take one maybe to land a couple. But Eubank, Eubank just doesn't want to get hit at all. So sometimes there's a, a threat there. He goes for a walk, he tries to find a way around, tries to think his way around. And I think he's doing more thinking than actually punching in this round. Time, time comes for Eubank to be beaten. Well, he wouldn't like the idea of his jaw going back to the baiting. There's the referee now picking up the cards. From, as I said, the judges from Puerto Rico, Italy and uh, Germany. And there's a little bit of info there and also the lady from the sponsors. We've got a whole battalion of the, the page three girls tonight here. Jim? 
Well, that was just a little spell when Eubank produced some punches, but not a lot got through. If you look here, I mean, most of them are bouncing off the arms and gloves. That, that, that was short. Yep, no real clean punches. And in Essex, uh, sorry, Holmes come back with a body shot, which the referee reckoned was low. Oh, Round 11. Now, I'd be interested to see if this goes to the 12th. Now, exactly the di difference in scoring, the margin. At the moment, unofficially, of course, Harry Gibbs has got uh, Eubank six points up. Remember, this is where the round that Holmes lost his championship. That was Jerry a good Ryan left hand, Holmes. Reg. Good left hand from Eubank. That troubled, that troubled yeah. Holmes a little bit. He's really under pressure. He is not throwing him back. The first time he hasn't come back with something. Because of his game showed you, you're almost willing that he stands there, don't you? You know, hate to see a good old fighter go out like that with the humiliation of being stopped when he's fought so well, even though he's not winning. I wonder whether Eubank uh, doesn't want to throw a punch, or whether he just can't keep it up under pressure, Jim. I'm not sure about it, are you? Good clean left hook there, Reg. Another one, I tell you, Holmes takes a good shot. Well, Eubank, it's one of the criticisms we've made. He's never, he's never at any time in his career maintained an attack. He's never sustained any pressure. I think as soon as he feels himself going out of breath, he backs off. I mean, out of breath and tiredness are two different things. You're entitled to be out of breath. But here Holmes showing his pride again. He's been really under fire at the start of this round and he's trying to pull himself back into it. Just about borderline that punch, but uh, Holmes almost ignores them. He's, he's almost saying to him, how do you like this, isn't he, as he walks into your bank? Well, it's not bad coming back with a decent attack here, Holmes, because he really was under fire earlier. A couple of good, real clean shots he took to the chin. Well, I think there's a few critics you've got to eat their words here, Jim. OK, he's not winning anything, Holmes, but he's staying in there, isn't he? He's swapping when he can. It's been a show all the way through, Reg. And I thought he had a decent round in the previous round. I, I, he had a good seventh round, and I thought maybe he just uh, used up too much gas, but uh, he's back in it again, still got a little bit left. So coming up then to the end of the 11th. Oh yes, a little bit, well, almost a friendly exchange there. They were, they were both staring at each other there, but uh, doing a bit of eyeballing, but I, I think a little bit of respect there from uh, Eubank in a way. And there's, uh, Harry Gibbs an official scorecard yet again. Remember, he is on the WBC panel of judges, but this is a WBO version of the World Championship. 109 to 102. So it's all over by three, three minutes, according to us. Uh, <laughs> but as Jim Watt was quite rightly saying, the WBO judges in the past uh, with Eubank have been, well, a little flattering at times, I thought. Well, he's had the legs to carry him home, but uh, it's a long time since he finished the 12 rounder. Actually, he's, he's fought six world champions, Lindell Holmes. There's, a, there's applause there. That is, for, for my part, that's for Holmes being in there. The, the crowd really expected this to be all over early. So at least the tipsters look like they're back to loser. Now, he might go for him, well, I say might, he is going for him in the last round, but he's still giving up the elbows and the forearms there, a little bit of the old-fashioned peekaboo style by Holmes, and they love it, the crowd now, he's got them on their side. 
on his side. And there were crowds with him, and there were a few times when Lindell Hopes always wished he were with the crowd. Yeah, I don't think he was greatly impressed. That was a good attack from Eubank, but uh, as, uh, as usual, more punches landing in arms than on target. But full credit to Holmes, not impressed, comes firing back with a good attack of his own. Still, still trading punches in the last hole with the man that uh, they thought was a no-hoper. Which I have to say, I'm not being wise after the event, Jim. I really thought he'd give him a run for his money, and he has. I don't mind about come on, you bank. I, I think Holmes has done pretty good. That's what he's saying, yeah. But there's, you have to ask yourself, uh, should a 36-year-old who is obviously well past his best, should he be taking Chris Eubank the full 12 rounds? OK, full credit to Holmes, still a class act, but, uh, I mean, should he still be there after 12 rounds with uh, a champion 10 years younger at his peak? Yeah, there's, there's still a couple of final pieces left in the Eubank jigsaw. Puzzles to be answered there. What a finish by Lindell Holmes here, Jimmy. Well, I think he's the one who's made all the friends tonight, Reg. He surprised everybody, put up a far better show than we expected. Okay, well behind in points. A good punch of out from Eubank. Those are better shots. Holmes' his arms dropped down. I don't know if he was shaking then. No, he's all right. 30 seconds to go. And you get the feeling that people are holding their breath now, at least hoping that Holmes can stay the course, because he deserves it. 15 seconds. Yes, he's done it all right, because if he went down now, the, the count would be interrupted. Well, that's a nice finish anyway. All mates together there at the end. They've, they've, they've given it a good battle. The crowd are satisfied. They paid a lot of money to come in, by the way. And uh, we make that 118. I say we, Larry, uh, Harry Gibbs, to 112 for Holmes. So 118, 112. Now, can I see how that compares with the three judges? The referee doesn't score. The smiles in the American corner there as if to say, oh, yes, all this business about him being hurt in the gymnasium, maybe you had an off day. It, ha it happens in the gym sometimes and lack, lack of concentration. Uh, it didn't seem to matter there because uh, he didn't go over against Eubank. Just getting the gloves off, waiting for those scorecards. It's always this... Have a look at that last round again, Jim. That's one of the best rounds of the fight, Reg. I mean, they both let good shots go. That was just a, in the last minute of the round when Eubank got through with some real good shots. I thought maybe he had finally shaken Holmes, but not. He'd come back again with good punches. So there's the decision. We're having an unanimous decision. Judge Ramos scores 117, 112. Judge Calvary scores 116, 114. Judge Ellison scores 120, 109. The winner and still super middleweight champion of the world. Well, there it is, Chris the winner, but Eubank. I think that's a disgraceful score there to give. That Eubank never lost a round, 120 and 109. The others were 116, 114, a couple of rounds in it by the Italian, and 117, 112 by the Puerto Rican. And uh, Harry Gibbs made it. Give. 118 to 112. So there you go. Now, is, uh, this fellow going to go on to the... The bigger stuff now, I mean, he's had a, a tough job there. He's climbing out of the ring. We're hoping that we can uh, let the doctor have a quick look at him. Part of the rules, as always. And then Gary Newborn will be straight in, as he always is. 
looking into his eyes there, and uh, he's got to be quite happy with himself. Sweating profusely there, uh, Eubank. So this fella's done this all before, the good loser, and uh, he can go out carrying his shield. And he can come back again. Right, Chris, well, first of all, let's, let's talk about your opponent, who Listen, was really game. Let me congratulate him. Now, that was one tough, one tough man, and all respect is due to him. Let me um, do something, because I promised some people I would do this. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, please, can you allocate more funds to the inner cities? These kids ain't got nothing else to do but go to crime. Um, we need more something, we need something more constructive in, in accordance with sports. We need something more constructive in accordance with education. All these cops have to stop. My mother once told me that all grey, all men with grey hair are good people, so I know you can do it, Mr. Prime Minister. OK, let me ask you something now. You've asked the Prime Minister something. Let me ask you now if we can start stepping up the class of opponents, because, you know, we want to see you in with the very best. You promised at the beginning of the season, or beginning of the year, that you were going to fight the best people. Now, Lyndall Holmes did very well, but he was, he is an elderly boxer with a care. very good future I behind him. I wasn't fighting his age. I was fighting the man and the man. And proved to be um, very, very, yes, very good. Yes, the result was inevitable. You, you well, know, it was a hard fight, but you're always going to win it. Okay. I mean, may, that may have looked that way to you. Still, after after the last 12 rounds, I tried to knock him out. He was game. He kept on coming. All due respect is due. Next question. Okay. Now, next question is about a lot of questions being asked, Chris, about your stamina. I mean, you you don't sustain these excellent attacks of yours. Uh -huh. Is there a stamina problem there over 12 rounds? Everyone's got a stamina, stamina problem. Everyone gets tired. I work strictly on power. All my punches are hard punches. That's why I, I may seem to get tired from time to time. But 35 fights, 35 wins. You can't touch that. I can't beat it. No one can beat it. Can I moment. just say? Very quickly. Are you going to cut off? Karen, love you bad coming home. Love you, Chris. strong. And the crowd still love you, mate. Thank you. What about you? Do you like me? I still like you, but I wish you'd fight better opponents. Oh, come on. That was a bit low, below the belt, but carry on. OK. OK. Nice one, Gary. Back in yes, a nice one, Gary. He's a bit of politics as well there from uh, Chris Eubank, 35 and 0. Well, before we go, let me tell you about our competition. Last weekend, you'll remember, Gary asked you this question to name the former world champions known as uh, Sugar Ray. And, of course, the answer was Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard. And our winner, Harry Proud from West Norwood in London, has been enjoying the action with us here tonight. Well, now, tonight's competition, we want you to name the former world champion known as Marvellous Marvin. 0891335599. Those lines are open until next Wednesday. The prize of VIP trip for two to the Lewis Tucker fight that in Las Vegas in May. And we come back to you next Saturday night, 10.15, with the big fight live, featuring the battle for the British heavyweight title. And, of course, we're going to be looking very closely at Herbie Hyde. Herbie Hyde, unbeaten from Norwich, 20 fights and 20 victories for Herbie. And he will be facing Manchester's Michael Murray for the British heavyweight title here on the big fight live. 10.15 next Saturday night.